A big thanks to President Trump and Elon Musk for just saying, you bet, let's get him, let's get him home. A absolutely. Elon Musk saved the U.S. space program. Elon Musk just scored an undisputable win. After an unexpected nine months stranded in space, two astronauts are finally back home, thanks to SpaceX. While others fumbled, Musk and his team delivered. A little appreciation goes a long way, and if anyone deserves it, it's Elon and SpaceX. Let's show our gratitude for this incredible achievement in today's TechMap episode. It's so great that after more than nine months in space, the crew of the Boeing crew flight test mission finally returned home amid the warm welcome of everyone, including these cute dolphins. They are joined by NASA astronaut Nick Haig and Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexander Gorbanov. In September 2024, they launched on Freedom, which contained two empty seats that are now being used by Wilmore and Williams for NASA's Crew-9 mission. The crew splashed down safely in a SpaceX Dragon spacecraft off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida, in the Gulf of America. After returning to shore, the crew will fly to NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston and reunite with their families. Boeing finally broke the silence with a congratulatory post on X, but conveniently left out one tiny detail. They forgot to say, thank you SpaceX and Elon Musk for doing what we couldn't, saving our astronauts who got stranded in space because of us. Instead, their message read, welcome home to the Crew-9 astronauts. NASA's Nick Haig, Suni Williams and Butch Wilmore, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexander Gorbunov. Your dedication and unwavering commitment to space exploration inspires us all. Elon Musk, SpaceX CEO, also sent his huge congratulations. Congratulations to the SpaceX and NASA teams for another safe astronaut return. Thank you to POTUS for prioritizing this mission. Even a former NASA astronaut is saying it out loud, Elon Musk saved the U.S. space program. Charles Camarda, a veteran astronaut who flew on the space shuttle, didn't hold back when he praised Musk's impact on the industry. If it weren't for Elon Musk, we would not be able to fly U.S. astronauts from U.S. soil to the International Space Station. There is no doubt about it. And he's not wrong. SpaceX single-handedly revived American crewed spaceflight ending NASA's reliance on Russian Soyuz spacecraft after the space shuttle was retired. Boeing was supposed to help with that too, but, well, we all know how that's been going. With every successful Crew Dragon mission, SpaceX is not just proving itself. It's proving that the future of human spaceflight belongs to those who can actually deliver. The journey back home for Crew-9 was nothing short of thrilling. It all started late Monday night, March 17th, as NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams suited up in their sleek SpaceX flight suits, preparing for departure. At 10.45 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, teams began securing the Dragon spacecraft's hatch, locking in the duo for their ride back to Earth. By 11.15 p.m., the hatch was officially sealed. At the dawn of March 18th, SpaceX officially confirmed Dragon's separation. The spacecraft later slowly drifted away into the vastness of space. Over the next two hours, the spacecraft fired four departure burns, carefully maneuvering farther from the station. The real action kicked in at 5.06 p.m., when Dragon jettisoned its trunk section, setting the stage for re-entry. Moments later, at 5.11 p.m., the capsule performed a critical deorbit burn, slowing down and aligning itself for a safe return. As it hit Earth's atmosphere, the astronauts inside experienced an intense 4 Gs of force, a true test of endurance. Then the grand finale. At 5.57 p.m., four massive parachutes deployed, gracefully slowing Dragon down for a splashdown just off Florida's coast. And here's where it gets historic. Crew-9 marks the last SpaceX Dragon splashdown in the Atlantic before future missions shift to the Pacific. Speaking of history, Crew-10 will be the first Dragon mission to splash down in the Pacific Ocean, a move designed to reduce debris risks. And get this, 
the last time a U.S. crewed spacecraft landed in the Pacific, Apollo 8 in 1968. That means after 57 years, SpaceX is bringing back this legendary tradition. To ensure a smooth recovery, SpaceX's support ship Megan, named after astronaut Megan MacArthur, set sail from Tampa Bay, ready to welcome the returning heroes. The two astronauts stranded on board the ISS Chess are 59-year-old Sunita Suni Williams and Barry Butch Wilmore, 61, both veteran NASA-trained space travelers. Williams, the current commander of the ISS and a retired U.S. Navy officer, joined NASA in 1998. Over her career, she has spent 322 days in space and completed nine spacewalks. She previously held the record for the most spacewalks by a female astronaut until 2017 when the title went to Peggy Whitson, who completed 10. Wilmore first flew to space in 2009 on board the space shuttle Atlantis. Before the Boeing Starliner mission, he had logged 178 days in space. He has served as a flight engineer and commander on previous ISS missions, conducting research on plant growth in space the effects of microgravity on the human body, and environmental changes on Earth. In the Boeing mission, Wilmore served as the commander and Williams was the pilot. After an eventful journey aboard Boeing's CST-100 Starliner, SUNY Williams and Butch Wilmore found themselves facing an unexpected dilemma. Their ride home wasn't coming back for them. Starliner, meant to be Boeing's answer to SpaceX's Crew Dragon, suffered a series of technical failures during its first crewed test flight under NASA's commercial crew program. It all started during their 25-hour trip to the ISS, when Starliner encountered helium leaks and a malfunctioning thruster, a crucial component for controlling re-entry. Upon arrival on June 6, 2024, things got even more concerning as four more of the spacecraft's 28 thrusters failed, delaying docking with the space station. Engineers worked quickly, managing to restore most of the systems, but NASA ultimately deemed the vehicle too risky for a crewed return. That left Williams and Wilmore stranded on the ISS with no way home. With no safe option to return them immediately, NASA made the call in August 2024 to bring them back using SpaceX's Crew Dragon. However, the timing was everything. Launching them home too soon would have left the ISS with only one U.S. astronaut, impacting research and emergency capabilities. So they had to wait until Crew-10 arrived to replace them. Now, after more than nine months in space, their wait is finally over. With Crew-10 safely on board, Williams and Wilmore are strapped into Crew Dragon 9 for their long overdue return. This mission marks one of the longest space flights for U.S. astronauts in recent history and a critical moment for NASA's partnership with commercial spaceflight providers. It's also a stark reminder that even after decades of space travel, getting to and from orbit is never guaranteed. During the time in space, Williams, Wilmore, alongside agency astronauts Nick Haig, completed more than 900 hours of research between more than 150 unique scientific experiments and technology demonstrations during their stay aboard the orbiting laboratory. Some scientific milestones accomplished during their journey include mighty microalgae. NASA astronaut Nick Haig processes samples for Arthrospira C, an investigation from ESA, European Space Agency, that transplants and grows Arthrospira microalgae aboard the International Space Station. These organisms conduct photosynthesis and could be used to convert carbon dioxide exhaled by crew members into oxygen, helping maintain a safe atmosphere inside spacecraft. Arthrospira also could provide fresh food on long-duration space missions. More interesting, we have the red romaine lettuce growing in the International Space Station's Advanced Plant Habitat, which is part of Plant Habitat 07 a study of how different moisture levels affect the microbial communities in plants and water. Results could show how less than ideal conditions affect plant growth. This would benefit to improve the nutrition source for astronauts who rely on frozen food supplies from Earth. 
At this point, can't help but mention the bionutrients investigation, which demonstrates technology to produce nutrients during long-duration space missions using engineered microbes like yeast. Food stored for long periods can lose vitamins and other nutrients, and this technology could provide a way to make supplements on demand. NASA astronaut Suni Williams prepares specially designed growth packets for the investigation aboard the International Space Station. In addition to the shortage of fresh food, the microgravity effect also results in the loss of muscle for humans. Researchers are testing the European Enhanced Exploration Exercise Device, E4D, a single, small device effective at countering bone and muscle loss and improving cardiovascular health could help crew on future missions. Another exercise study is the Hardy Workout. In this picture, NASA astronaut Nick Haig exercises on the International Space Station's Advanced Resistive Exercise Device while wearing the biomonitor vest and headband. This set of garments contains sensors that unobtrusively collect data such as heart rate, breathing rate, blood pressure, and temperature. The data supports studies on human health, including vascular aging, ACSA investigation that monitors cardiovascular function in space. Alongside the physical training, on-demand medical devices are also needed. NASA astronaut Butch Wilmore works with hardware for INSPA Auxilium Bioprinter, a study that tests 3D printing of an implantable medical device that could facilitate recovery from peripheral nerve damage. In microgravity, this manufacturing technique produces higher quality devices that may perform better, benefiting crew members on future long duration missions and patients back home. The next one is pack bed reactors, which are systems that pack materials such as pellets or beads inside a structure to increase contact between any liquids and gases flowing through it. NASA astronaut Suni Williams installs hardware for the packed bed reactor experiment. Water Recovery Series, PBREWRS investigation, which examines how gravity affects these systems aboard the International Space Station. During the residence time-driven flame spread, SOFI RTDFS, investigation at the International Space Station, this sheet of clear acrylic plastic burns at higher oxygen levels and half the standard pressure of Earth's atmosphere. From left to right, the image sequence shows a side and top view of the fuel and the oxygen slowly diffusing into the flame. Studying the spread of flames in microgravity could help improve safety on future missions. During a recent spacewalk, NASA astronaut Butch Wilmore swabbed the exterior of the International Space Station for ISS external microorganisms an investigation exploring whether microorganisms leave the spacecraft through its vents, and if so, which ones survive. Humans carry microorganisms along with them wherever they go, and this investigation could help scientists take steps to limit microbial spread to places like the Moon and Mars.